I'm waiting for the results, my, for my end of treatment results. Yeah. So she's going to fax them straight through to him and then hopefully he will get back to me. Sean Redding, desperate and unable to get hepatitis C treatment within the healthcare system, has taken matters into his own hands. Millions worldwide face this dilemma. I've been making a film about access to treatment for the hepatitis C epidemic for over a year. I found out I had hep C in 1998. It's highly contagious and can cause cirrhosis and liver cancer. Previously, treatment was very toxic. Now there are new drugs which cure with virtually no side effects. I live in Germany where I was prescribed treatment with the new drug Harvoni. I am now cured. I've come back to the UK to find out why people here aren't receiving the same treatment as me. I'm starting with Dr. Andrew Hill, an expert in drug pricing. If you look at the cost of these treatments, they're fundamentally cheap drugs. They cost £100 per course to make. 12 weeks of treatment for one person. That same treatment is being sold in the United Kingdom for £35,000. So it's just such a huge price that the National Health Service and NICE have been hesitating, they've been waiting to decide who should be treated first. Yet based on our investigation... Dr Hill told me about the US Senate's investigation into pricing, which is focused on one particular pharma company, Gilead. Using Gilead's own documents, the evidence shows that the company pursued a calculated scheme for pricing and marketing its hepatitis C drug based on one goal, maximizing revenue regardless of the human consequences. How many billions do they need to make before they start lowering their prices? These drugs are fundamentally cheap but they're not being accessed by most people because the prices are so high. One of the reasons there's so little protest about the high price of hepatitis C treatment is that patients are often stigmatised. I went back to see my old doctor to ask him about this stigma. Being silent about hepatitis C is doing no one any favours. I think there is an incredible amount of stigma and I think that stigma probably comes from the days of hepatitis C being labelled as a disease of intravenous drug use and of intravenous drug use as not being a useful part of society. I went to see Dr Magdalena Harris who is researching the experiences of people with hepatitis C. For them, a trip to the dentist is always complicated. The issue of the last appointment, I've been hearing that for the last 10 years in conducting research with people living with hepatitis C, that I'm given the last appointment of the day by my dentist, which is absolutely unnecessary. We need to destigmatize this and say this is, this is an infection. It's, it's no different from any other infection. It's an infection that people catch uh, uh, and that needs to be treated. One person who hasn't been able to access NHS treatment is Jujana Sneri. Recently diagnosed, her appointments keep getting postponed. She isn't sure how she was infected with hepatitis C. What's she planning to do about treatment? I don't know. I don't know what, what I should do, really. I, um, I suppose, I mean, I've been trying to sign up with um, trials without any success. Uh, I know you can also get uh, drugs from India, cheaper. Um, I don't know. Zhuzhana's life and health are being badly affected because she isn't getting treatment. Ten years ago, when I had breast cancer and stopped the HRT, I was quite fit and well. And during the last ten years, I have gradually got worse. My stamina has gone. My mobility has been drastically reduced, uh, whereas before I could walk for hours without getting tired. Now I don't, I'm not able to walk at all. I use a mobility buggy outside. 
Some people are taking treatment into their own hands and are finding answers online. Buying drugs off the internet is, is a new thing. Uh, it, it's an emerging way of, of being treated. And one issue is, do you know that the, the medicine that you're buying is genuine? All these places will give information for anybody on how to... Sean Reddin couldn't get treatment in Ireland. The Irish Health Service, like the NHS, can't afford to treat everyone. Online, he found the Australian-based Fix Hep C Buyers Club. Through them, he bought clinically tested generic drugs. I became a member of the Buyers Club and had my appointment via Skype with Dr Freeman. I sent him all my documentation from my, my blood test results from Ireland and he said yes it's possible uh, he can, if I come over to Australia I can come to him he can give them to me. Sean paid about £750 for treatment that will cost the NHS around £35,000. I have now completed 12 weeks of treatment uh, last Monday uh, sorry, last Sunday night, I went for my blood tests on Monday. I am now waiting for my end of treatment results as we speak. My GP, Dr Johnny Fleetwood in Dublin, is on the phone. Mm -hmm. He has the results of my end of treatment tests. And so, uh, good afternoon, Dr Fleetwood. Good afternoon, Sean. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. A little bit apprehensive and nervous, but excited at the same time. I think you should be excited because your hepatitis C test is negative. Excellent, That's Johnny. Amazing. That is brilliant news. How oh, do you feel? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> God. Oh, God. You know, I've lived with hepatitis since 1980. That's 36 years. In the UK, it is legal to get three months treatment delivered to your door. So, for those patients who can pay for it, the online buyers club may be an option. But most will have to wait and see whether the NHS can afford to treat them. This is billions of pounds in funding at a time that the NHS is in a very difficult financial situation. So, it just doesn't seem feasible that we're going to be able to eliminate hepatitis C within the next 15 or even 20 years with prices this high, but we could, we, could, we definitely could, if we could get these drugs at lower prices. That report from Kate Brown. Well, look, we asked to speak to Gilead, who you had mentioned there, about the cost of uh, their drugs, but instead they sent us a statement. While we appreciate Senator Wyden's attention to this issue, we respectfully disagree with his conclusions. Both Solvadi and Harvoni are deemed cost-effective by the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence. The one-time cost of Solvadi, Sovaldi or Harvoni pales in comparison to the lifetime costs associated with untreated HCV. Well, with me now, Virginia Acher, uh, Executive Director of the Association of the British Pharmaceutical Industry. Good evening to you. Thanks, Look, Evan. We know that the drug companies have to be recompensed for the research, the yeah. billions they spend on research. Do you think there's any limit to the price they should be allowed to charge? I think we're focusing a lot on price and what I didn't hear at all in that really you know, impactful video was the, the value uh, that we're getting through the way these medicines are being introduced in healthcare. And when NICE gives an approval, that's not just a, a tick because we think it's great that it's a curative treatment. That's because they've looked at, does it make sense to spend the British payers pound on this medicine as opposed to any other intervention we could do to right. really care for So it really does make sense, doesn't it? No one's going to dispute it. It's a great, yeah. These are great drugs. It's really, really great drugs. But look, let's suppose it has £100,000 of benefit. Do you think it's reasonable for the drug company to charge £99,999 and say, look, you've still got a pound of benefit and, and there, that's or the, not? That's the benefit of, of an open system that we have, like in the UK, where we can negotiate. And let's be honest, I mean, the list price that we've been hearing about isn't necessarily what's getting paid by the healthcare services. There is some very competitive and effective discounting ah, going on. Wait, 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 wait. So we, you, you, you think we might be paying less than uh, the 35000 I, I, I would almost guarantee that with the, within the process of the way we negotiate uh, access arrangements right. under NICE and directly with the NHS, um, that 
the government does a very good job of making sure that it's being a careful uh, buyer when they're investing in new medicines. And let's remember, it's not just a case of one medicine. We have at least three hepatitis C products that are now all competing for that very treatment area. So competition's going to be driving value, no doubt. Mm. I mean, look, essentially, we give Gilead the monopoly on the one they've got, which I think is the one that has the best uh, cross all genotype uh, use. We give them the monopoly through the patent system, don't we, which allows them to charge the high price. Would it be reasonable for the rest of, for, for society to say, look, if you're going to abuse it, we are actually going to shorten the patent. And well, and, and I think we're kind of mixing again the two systems. So patents are very important for protecting investment in R&D. They're a way of making sure that the science can carry on because let's be honest, that's what a patent does. It allows you to disclose and protect your investment. Pricing and negotiating around pricing, that should be a separate conversation and, and it certainly is. And that's where when we look at you know the value of any drug, and I, I wouldn't compare between the different hepatitis C products necessarily, but when you look at how they're going to negotiate their value, they're going to talk about not just what it costs them to come to market, but more importantly, what does it mean for the patients? And you know, that, what's the saddest thing to me is that patients are having to work so hard to get to a medicine which is already approved by NICE and if, should be available to them. If you had, uh, if you were in a drug system, a health insurance company or the NHS, and they said they're not buying you and you, and you had hepatitis C, would you go to a buyer's club and, and buy it? for much cheaper from, a, from a, a source that's not respecting the patent? Well, so especially with my background, uh, I, I used to work a, a lot in regulatory systems. I'd be very concerned about working on any system that doesn't go through the normal channels Come of working on, you with would, my doctor. You would, you would take it, wouldn't you, if, if it was the only uh, thing no. available? <laughs> I, I've seen some of the, the ways that we can abuse uh, people's trust on the internet. So no, I think we'd like to make sure that we keep people in the safe, sound system of the NHS as we always have. Virginia Ratcher, thanks very Thank much. Thank you for having Thanks. us.